All the trusses are up and they're braced off. And I can't believe we've gotten this much done. We're Riley and Courtney Casey. Frustrated by the nine to five, we set out to make a living making things. Through your incredible support, we've been able to bring you along for the ride, and we can't wait to share our next chapter with you. Say hello to 20 acres of raw, off-grid land in Northern Idaho. Before we're ready to hang our trusses, we need to finish up our truss carrier, which is this top board. Our posts are eight feet on center, but our trusses are going to be four feet on center. So we have one truss that is on the mid span between the two posts. So that's what the truss carrier is holding. We're also gonna add a piece of blocking at the midway point that's gonna later give us a place to screw our truss to. Where are you going? <laughs> this is where I sleep tonight. We just got our, the last truss carrier installed. These two by 12s carry the load of this truss in the gap between the posts. These two by 12s act a lot like a header over a window and distribute the load of the roof down to the posts. All our posts are in, our walls are plumb-ish. It's time to mount our posts to our brackets permanently, which means drilling holes. I don't not, I'm not confident I can make it all the way through and hit the other side like RR does, so we're gonna do it one side and then the other and hope the holes meet in the middle. We were worried about the wind, we didn't think about the rain. Thunderstorm just rolled in and our tools are getting wet. So I need to go get things covered up. Today is a very exciting day. We are finally ready to hang our trusses. I think, we think. And I think by this afternoon, this building's gonna look way different. <laughs> I am excited. I'm also nervous. What's new? So right now we're doing all the math to make sure that our eaves end up in the right ah, size. Phew! Bless you. <laughs> Hold on, sun came out. <laughs> okay, carry on. <laughs> so we already ordered our sheet metal for the roof and it's 18 feet long. So we can adjust our eave length to make sure the sheet metal works out. I'm pretty sure 18 feet's right for a two foot eave, but we're gonna quadruple check because we cannot change our sheet metal. Let's see how today goes. Yes, if you can help me line up that line on that corner. Ready? Mm -hmm. There's a flaw in our plan and our spacer block that we use to space the truss up is gonna hit our posts because it's too wide. So Riley's gotta climb up there and trim it. Riley just got that corner attached and now he's gonna come over here and do this one. I'm holding this because I'm keeping the truss from getting caught by the wind and getting pulled off the forks. We did it! One truss down, it's the most difficult one, and it worked.
On the last one, pre-nailing our rafter tail seemed to work really well, so we're gonna do that again. We also started all of the screws ahead of time, which worked really well because then Riley only had to climb up with the impact and finish putting them in and not have to get them started. So we're gonna do that again as well. Now we're marking where the center of the truss lands on each purlin so that we can make sure that the trusses are spaced correctly, not just on the ends, but also in the center. We totally forgot to mark our trusses while they were on the ground for the purlins. So in the future, we're gonna have all those marks ahead of time before we hang them. But that's the first thing that Riley is marking up there and then we can actually mount the purlins. Right now on the trusses, he's marking the spacing that the purlins go down. Riley needs this ratchet strap, but he's all the way up there. So you're about to see how bad at softball it was. I'm gonna throw it overhand. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> you got it. It She's barely so got bad. caught. She's not so bad at softball after all. <laughs> the roof purlins kicked our butt. <laughs> I could not put nails in those things. I tried the framing nailer, I tried my Armstrong nailer, and they bend and I can't get up high enough and the angle's wrong. Awkward. And then Courtney suggested screws, and I have these uh, structural construction screws, and they worked awesome, so. We are now out of them. That's our last one, so calling it for the night, but we've got three trusses up. And four purlins. Tomorrow's gonna be a good day, and I think we're gonna knock this all out, which is great because the next day our siding arrives. It's starting to look like a building. Now that we've got quite a bit more wind resistance up there, we are gonna brace the building um, so that even if wind does pick up tonight, nothing happens. See you tomorrow. This dust cloud. It's day two of hanging trusses. We've got a little more of a breeze today, so we're gonna work slowly and carefully um, and stop. Ah, gosh, there's dirt in my eyes. Ready to make a lot more progress today. Now we have a system figured out, we think. Our bracing with straps held last night. Everything looks good, so we're gonna pull these off. Our small 2000 watt generator is not powerful enough to be able to start this air compressor. However, the inverter in the camper is. So we have to haul the air compressor up the hill to the camper. There you go. <laughs> now drive backwards. The strap was stuck and I was not about to climb up there just to take a strap off, but Courtney's getting really good on that thing. Oh, we're good. Any, anything to say? So due to a measuring mistake very early on, 
our building ended up one inch wider than the length of our trusses. So our trusses are 30 foot, our building is 30 foot one inch. So to account for that, we're just centering the trusses up. So we line up the truss a half an inch inside of the truss carrier on this side. I always start on this side. Then I go to the other side and I line it up a half an inch again. That ensures that our two walls are perfectly parallel and exactly the same spacing on the top as they are on the bottom. Hey, guess what guys? We've been wondering if we have lake views from here. I don't know if you can see it, but right here between these two trees, I can see the lake. So if we clear a few more trees out, we're gonna have lake views from our apartment. That's awesome. I'm on my water break. This is going really well. I'm stoked. We have one more truss to hang for our spacing to work out for our wall purlins, and then it's time for Riley to climb up there and put all of the purlins on. Our building <laughs> you caught me <laughs> yeah wow it looks like a building now Riley was making me nervous yesterday what's new so I went to Home Depot last night and I got him a present I feel safer already knowing that my shorts can't keep falling off <laughs> The center purlins running along the ridge line are keeping the trusses from doing this, but we also want something along the bottom of the truss to continue to prevent any sort of racking. So we cut this plank and we marked on the ground where the trusses need to hit and Riley's gonna go up with it. Later when we insulate the ceiling, this is also gonna give us a place to stand while we walk along in between the trusses up inside the ceiling. Worst air hose in the history of air hoses, <laughs> and I am tempted to just mount a hose reel right here. That's not where the hose reel right goes. Right now. So I'm going down to Harbor Freight and I'm buying us a hose reel for my own. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> She's been trying to coil that thing for about the last five minutes. Stop it. I just deal with the tangled mess, but. Ah! We have all of our trusses hung. Now we're gonna work on getting the center ridge cap purlins on to give it some stability and that board that goes underneath that's called the rat something. Rat what? I have no idea. Rat cat? Catwalk? That was a rat. Something that the rats run along. All the trusses are up and they're braced off and I can't believe we've gotten this much done. Oh my gosh, wait, look. Next step is either to start installing roof purlins or the end wall, I'm not really sure. I'm stuck. Would you like me to unleash you? <laughs> You'll notice there is no diagonal bracing in our walls. We are going to add some diagonal bracing to give this building some sheer strength. We just have not done it yet, and there is a reason for that. We want to be able to square up the roof, and if our walls were locked in, there's no way that we could get the roof to move. We'd rather have the roof be perfectly square so that our eaves end up straight and our sheet metal goes on square to the roof 
then the walls be square. So we're gonna lock in the roof in square, make sure the walls are plumb, and then lock those in with diagonal bracing. We've had quite a few comments about how a, a windstorm could come and knock our whole building over. Yes, I acknowledge that is a concern. There's very little wind resistance in this building yet, but especially once we get roof sheet metal on it, there's gonna be a lot of wind resistance. So what we do every night or before we leave this building unattended is we actually diagonally brace with straps from one corner down to the telehandler and then up to the other corner. And what that does is lock this building in so that we know it's nice and secure while we're not around. Wanna go swimming? <laughs> 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 they know where we're going. Careful. Yeah. Ow! Okay, yeah. Ow! Yeah, I I fully stepped in the water. <laughs> I left you to the purpose. It is dark and we are headed home. And we are about to try our light bar for the first time. Are you ready? Yep. Oh, uh, that's not the right switch. Are you ready? Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's it's totally like it's daylight. It's definitely pointed too far at the ground. I need to aim it up a little bit, but that is so bright. Oh my gosh. Wait. <laughs> I can't even see now. <laughs> I really didn't think it was going to be that bright. I did not expect that. The people in the bar were mooning us and I turned the light bar on. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, how did that happen? Yeah, that was funny. What are the odds of that? <laughs> <laughs> they were not expecting that. I don't even really think I could make this stuff up if I tried, but a deer just jumped out into the road and we could see it from so far away that Riley did barely had to use the brakes to slow us down in time. With the normal headlights, I don't even think I ever would have seen that deer. It jumped out into the road and, and crossed the road, but with the bottom designs left on, I saw it and was able to just slowly coast and slow down and watch the deer clear the road and off into the trees. 